True stalkers lurking in the shadows, disturbing secrets that defy explanation and the eerie pulse of the night. Welcome to Scarier Things, where we delve into the disturbing and chilling world of true night shift stories. These aren't your typical bedtime tales. These are true horror stories that will keep you awake long after the sun has set. Tonight, we'll uncover the secrets of true stalkers, encounter scary and disturbing events that defy explanation, and explore the eerie corners of the night. So grab your flashlight, lock the doors, and prepare for a journey into the heart of darkness. Story number one. Working the night shift at my local Waldbaums was an experience that left an indelible mark on me. Back when the store operated 24 hours a day, the late night hours were eerily quiet. Most nights, there were fewer than 10 customers and the store's vast expanse seemed to swallow their presence. But my job wasn't one of leisure. I wasn't allowed to sit idly by. Instead, I was tasked with stocking shelves whenever I wasn't assisting a customer. Waldbaum's was a larger store, and during those solitary nights, it felt like my own private domain. Occasionally, there might be one other person in the building, a fellow stalker or a diligent cleaner. But most of the time, it was just me and the hum of fluorescent lights. One fateful night, as I meticulously arranged cereal boxes in their designated spots, I heard a muffled crash from the next aisle over. The sound was unexpected, as the store's sliding door opening was the loudest thing I had ever encountered. It caught me off guard. Perhaps there was a customer I hadn't noticed. I turned my attention to the adjacent aisle, and there he stood, a man with an unsettling gaze. His eyes bore into mine, devoid of any expression. His face wasn't ugly, but it was peculiar. His upper lip jutted out, reminiscent of a character from a cartoon. I wondered if he was a regular customer, someone I'd overlooked during previous shifts. Can I help you, sir? I asked, my voice echoing through the empty store. His request was simple. He needed directions to the eggs. I gestured toward the dairy section, and he shuffled away, his footsteps barely audible on the linoleum floor. But something about him lingered, an oddity that made my skin prickle. Perhaps it was the way he stared, unblinking, or the way his lips curved into a half-smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. As I continued my work, I couldn't shake the feeling that he was watching me. The cereal boxes blurred together, and I hurried to finish the aisle. When I finally pushed the U-boat cart toward the back room, I was stopped dead in my tracks. There he was again, blocking my path. Nice night, isn't it? He said, his voice too smooth, too rehearsed. I nodded, my discomfort growing. He peppered me with questions. My name, my age, where I went to school. Innocuous enough. But then he veered into strange territory. Did I attend parties? Did I have a girlfriend? The questions felt invasive, probing. I stumbled over my answers, my mind racing. And then he asked the question that sent a chill down my spine. Have you ever had a boyfriend? I stammered, unsure how to respond. The fluorescent lights flickered overhead, casting shadows on the linoleum. His eyes bore into mine, and I wondered what secrets lay hidden behind that peculiar face. In that dimly lit aisle, I realized I was alone with a stranger who defied categorization. Was he harmless, merely socially awkward? Or did he harbor darker intentions? I couldn't shake the feeling that this encounter would linger long after my shift ended. The night when the sliding door opened and the man with the unsettling gaze stepped into my world. Story number two. The gas station sat like a lonely outpost on the desolate highway, its neon sign flickering in the cold night air. I was the lone sentinel during the graveyard shift my college degree gathering dust as I manned the register from midnight to 6 a.m. The road outside was a ghostly ribbon, rarely disturbed by more than one or two cash-paying customers. But the extra five dollars an hour my boss threw my way kept me tethered to that dimly lit station. Student loans loomed over me like vultures, and this mundane job was my penance. 
One frigid December night, I sat behind the counter, my refuge a stack of newspapers and a smartphone loaded with games. The hum of the fluorescent lights provided a monotonous soundtrack. Then the headlights sliced through the darkness. A red pickup truck pulling into the lot. The door creaked open and a figure stepped out. I glanced up, expecting the usual routine. But this man stood by the gas pump, unmoving. His gaze bore into the machine, as if deciphering hieroglyphics. I assumed he wasn't paying cash. Most customers didn't these days. Minutes passed, and he remained rooted there. I felt a chill crawl up my spine. When he finally turned his head, I met his eyes, or rather, the abyss where his features should be. His face was a void, a silhouette against the night. I returned to my newspaper, pretending not to notice, but my heart raced. Who was this man? Why was he staring? I willed myself to focus on the print, but the words blurred. The gas pump's fluorescent glow cast eerie shadows on the linoleum floor. When I dared to look up again, he had moved closer. Not walking, just gliding like a specter. Panic surge. I considered helping him, but something about his stillness unnerved me. His face remained inscrutable, a black canvas. I approached the glass door, my breath fogging the pain. His eyes followed me, unblinking. Fear clutched my throat. Was he dangerous, a lost traveler, or something else entirely? Without hesitation, I locked the door, flipping the sign from open to closed. The man's silhouette pressed against the glass, his gaze unyielding. I didn't care about the consequences, survival trumped protocol. I retreated to the back room, my pulse echoing in the silence. As dawn approached, I peeked out. The man was gone leaving only the faintest trace of his presence, a lingering chill, a memory etched in the gas station's walls. I never saw him again, but his faceless stare haunted my nights, a riddle without an answer. And so, I continued my lonely vigil, the gas pump's glow casting shadows on the linoleum, waiting for the next enigma to emerge from the darkness. Story number three. Two years ago, I found myself on the night shift at a 7-Eleven. The clock struck 10 p.m., and I settled into my post behind the counter, ready for the long haul until 4 a.m. The store sat on the side of a busy highway, its neon sign a beacon in the darkness. Despite the occasional beer run or snack purchase, the nights were usually quiet minus 10 to 20 customers at most. But this particular night would be different etching itself into my memory like a ghostly fingerprint. The door chimed, and a man in his mid-twenties stepped inside. His entrance was unremarkable, but as he approached the counter, something felt off. He emitted strange noises, loud, discordant yells that echoed through the empty store. My first thought was that he had a mental disability. My brother faced similar challenges, so empathy washed over me. His head tilted upward, eyes fixed on the ceiling. I tried to engage him in conversation, but his responses remained unintelligible, more primal than verbal. Was he alone? I scanned the parking lot. No cars. Perhaps he'd walked here. He lingered, staring upward, lost in some otherworldly reverie. I handed him a bag of chips, hoping to ease his distress, but he continued his cacophony. Desperate, I searched for a number to call for assistance. But then, without warning, he turned and shuffled out of the store. Relief washed over me, mingled with a creeping unease. His presence had unsettled me, and I wondered about the thin line between compassion and fear. An hour later, the foam on the counter jolted me from my thoughts. I picked up, expecting a routine inquiry or perhaps a prank. Instead, the familiar yelling sounds assaulted my ears the man from earlier, reaching across the void. Panic surge. Who was he? Why was he haunting my night? I hung up, my paranoia mounting. I checked the windows, scanning the darkened lot. Four o'clock couldn't come soon enough. When my replacement arrived, I fled, leaving the strange man's echoes behind. At home, I collapsed, my nerves frayed. 
But then my phone rang. A shrill intrusion at 4 a.m. who would call at this hour. I hesitated, imagining the worst. The night had left its mark, and now it followed me, insistent and unyielding. As I answered, I could only imagine what awaited me on the other end. A voice, perhaps, or more inexplicable sounds. The haunting of that night shift had seeped into my reality, and I wondered if I'd ever escape its grasp. Story number four. In the canine unit, I'd seen my share of graveyard shifts, those eerie hours when the world seemed to hold its breath. My partner was Sammy, a two-year-old German shepherd still finding her footing in the job. We were both newbies, navigating the darkness together. One moonless night, I patrolled the desolate road flanked by crops. The air smelled of earth and anticipation. And then there it was, a white van nestled among the fields. Both doors stood open, like gaping maws. My instincts screamed danger, and I flashed my headlights, hoping to coax out whoever lurked inside. Silence. No movement. I parked and surveyed the area. Empty. But something gnawed at me, urging caution. Sammy strained against her leash as we approached the van's trunk. Her urgency was palpable. I hesitated, then lifted the lid. A putrid gust assaulted me. Decay, death, and shock. Seven body bags lay within, feet protruding like macabre offerings. Panic surge, and I radioed for backup. The world narrowed to that trunk, its secrets clawing at my sanity. A twig snapped nearby, and Sammy erupted. The leash slipped from my grasp, and she vanished into the crops. I drew my gun, following her barks. Each rustling leaf felt like a phantom hand reaching for me. Fear gripped my chest as I halted, surrounded by unseen movement. The night held its breath, waiting. Then it came, a vice around my throat, squeezing life from me. I gasped, vision dimming. Who? What? Panic surge. And then, salvation. Sammy's bark, a primal scream. She lunged at the man, teeth sinking into his leg. I staggered back, disoriented. The world blurred. Fear, fury, survival. In that desperate moment, I made a choice. The trigger yielded a gunshot, and the man crumpled. His eyes held terror, pleading. But I glimpsed the truth, the van, the body bags, the darkness. I'd survived, but at what cost? To this day, I question my actions. Was it justice or instinct? The crops whispered no answers. Sammy stood by my side, blood on her muzzle, eyes unyielding. We'd faced the abyss together, and it had changed us both. <laughs>